Hello, this is Scott at Mexoft Support, and I'm going to give you a demonstration of the new nesting package that is available in Visual Mill 2012. This demonstration will focus on rectangular nesting. Before I actually get into the nesting process, I want to point out a couple things that need to be done in preparation for creating a nest, and that is to stage the stock material shape and the individual part shapes on your screen so they can be easily selected. Two things that I want to point out that you must be careful of. Number one, when you stage a part, stage it around the outside of the material, not within the material. The nesting software will put the part in the material. Secondly, for small parts, don't put them inside cutouts of other parts. Keep them all separately. If you put it inside, there is a chance the software will be confused and think that that smaller part is merely a detail of the larger part and you will not get the results that you want. After staging the parts, I want to bring up the nesting software. So I'll go to Visual Mill on the menu bar, choose the third option, Nesting Browser, that brings up the browser on the left of your screen and you will see two options, true shape nesting or rectangular nesting. I'm going to choose rectangular nesting because that's the focus in this demo. I also want to point out that there is a help button on each one of the steps of the nesting process and if you select that, it will bring up the documentation on the current step for nesting that you are on. Next, I want to select the stock material where the nesting will take place. Choose that option on the browser, pick Select Curves, select the geometry on the screen and use a right mouse button to accept that selection. This causes then an entry to be in the table on the browser. An automatic name is generated, a default count of one, and I will get back to the grain direction in just a little bit. Let's change the count of this piece to three. This means there are three identical sheets that the nesting will use to nest the parts. I want to point out that you can select additional shapes for stock, but also point out that all of them must be rectangular. Now I'm going to select the parts to be nested. Go to that step in the browser, pick Select Curves, and one of the easiest ways to select is rectangular selection right mouse button accepts that selection and each one of those shapes then is entered into the table on the browser. But you'll notice that as I highlight these I don't have much control in that type of selection over the order that these are placed in the table. But what I would really like in this case is to have all of the outside periphery shapes of each of the parts at the top of the list in the browser. To achieve this, I'm going to remove all, go to Select Curves, and individually select each one of these periphery shapes. A right mouse button will enter them into the table. After that, I can select, even by window selection, the others, and right mouse button enters them into the table. At this point, then, you will notice that all of the periphery shapes are at the top of the list. Now I'll put in the count for each of the parts. You can ignore the count of any interior geometry because the system will carry the interior geometry along with its respective periphery part each time that part is nested. There is one parameter on this dialog called the orientation step angle. It is preset at 90 degrees and it may cause any of the parts to be rotated in increments of 90 degrees in order to achieve a better fit. I'm ready to create the nest. Let's go to the next step and enter two distances. The first one is the distance between adjacent parts. The second one is a margin around the stock material that you'd like to maintain. I'll select the button Execute Nest, preview the nest, and take a look and see that we have used three sheets uh, in this case. Let's look at the nest results on each one of the sheets. 
sheet one, sheet two, and I notice a few parts spilled over onto sheet three. Now I'm going to impose a grain direction control on this large part to force it to be oriented vertical to see if I can't improve the efficiency of the nest. To use grain direction I must have it set in two places. One on the stock material. I will set the grain direction along the length of the material which is a parallel to the x-axis. And also on the part and that happens to be part three. Here I will set the grain direction crosswise on the part which is parallel to the y-axis. Now I will return down and re-execute the nest. Now you notice the part is oriented vertically and I've only got two sheets utilized in this nest. Let's take a look at sheet number two. Once I am satisfied with the nest, I'll select the commit nest button which then writes the geometry for each one of the sheets onto individual layers of your current CAD part file. This then can be used later by a machining application or for whatever application you want to use it. Well that's it. That concludes the demonstration of the rectangular nesting found in Visual Mill in release 2012. Thank you.